Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on something that I've um, sort of I've come up with. Um, basically, I guess it's it's more of a concept um, for when multiplayer comes out. You know, survival mode in Scrap Mechanic. Um, you know, with that mode, we might be building bases for ourselves, for our friends, and things like that. And um, I wanted to figure out a way to sort of keep everyone out. Um, given that, you know, what you build is not able to be um, messed around with by anyone else, you know, they can't delete your house once you've completed it and things like that, um, this method should work. So what it is, is um, it's a normal sliding door, but I've added the um, ability to add a password onto there. Um, so, you know, with the um, the door will only open once the password has been put in um, and the sensor is triggered. Um, there's a few other concepts that I'll show you afterwards that includes, you know, to add a lock onto the door and also a um, button to keep the door moving. So let's get started. I'm just going to quickly make some... Sorry, I'm just going to quickly make some a sliding door so I can show you. So this is pretty simple. Um, I'm just just going to do this quickly. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need a controller. I'm going to need some buttons, bearings. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need this. And I think that's about it. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to make another section here just to fit everything that we have. This is going to be for the control box area. Sorry about the audio jack. I don't know what's going on. I can guarantee you I'm not plugging in and unplugging my headphones. Alright, let's do this. So, quickly link this up. Fuck! Shut up. Alright, so there's our door. I'm going to link this quickly so that's going that way. T red. If you guys do need help making this sliding door, I mean, I can show you, or if you just kind of like follow what I'm doing, um, you'll get it. I'm going to start that button off there, so there we go, we have a sliding door. Yep, it works fine. Alright, so now that we've got this sliding door, what we basically have to do is we need some other inputs. Um, so we basically, we need a sensor, oh that's what I forgot. Sensor, don't need these blocks. Okay, so what we're gonna need is bang, bang. We're gonna need a sensor there. Two, three, four. You can do as many of these as you want, but I'm just gonna do you just in case we need them. Okay. Got there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Controller for each bearing. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. is not six. Alright, so now we connect each of these up to here. We're going to set this first bearing to... Basically, we want to set this bearing here so we can turn this whole entire thing to about... I think it's about 29. 
let's see, 30, we're going to have to get 30 red, whoops, shouldn't have done that, there we go, 30 red, whoops, in start position, sorry. Yeah, so this one here we're going to have to set the offset 30. There you go. As you can see, because that's turned and all these bearings are connected up at 30 degrees, this sensor does not trigger. If we set it to, say, 31, oh, still doesn't trigger. Two. Sorry, 29. At 29, it does trigger. So we want it to be 30. There we go. Now, now that we've done that, what you can do is. So say, for example, three buttons here, which this is no longer going to open the door, this first switch. So this sensor is now going to open this door. So basically, if we stand in front of it, that door is going to open. Alright, so we've got a sensor that triggers the door, and now we need to set these buttons to also trigger the door. So what we want to do is, because we've got three switches here, um, we're going to want another sensor here. Oh, actually. We want the door to be closed, first of all. So we're going to go set this offset to 90. So we want it to be in closed position. and once we hit the trigger we want it to open so we should switch around so now we got it closed once the sensor is activated the door will open alright so we're going to want to cover this up and we're going to want to cover this up here okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a sensor here and I'll show you the reason why in a second link this up to the next unused bearing controller which is going to be oops alright link these up sorry getting a bit confused here okay this one we can't move because this is the original offset so it's going to be this one and each one next to it There we go. Next one is going to be the sensor. So we've got four bearings connected to here. So basically, if any of these bearings, uh, if any of these switches, I set their controller to, you know, to rotate by one degree, it's going to open the door. But because we want to set, there's four switches here. We want it to, we want all these switches on for this door to open. So basically, we want to want to set back our original offset by an extra four degrees so if I set this onto 34 and then each of these I set it to one and this one should actually be 33 sorry because we need one to trigger so now that we've done that it should work we're going to need all three switches on and you can see if you look slightly that is turning every time I actually press a button can you see that so we turn all these on plus the sensor should open the door and there we have it 
So just a simple design like that and you've created a passworded door. Um, so what you can do now is actually sort of add a few buttons. Uh, let's make it neater. There you go. So now you've got a door here um, which any of these buttons are obviously not going to work. Stepping on that is obviously not going to work. Um, only if you know the combination the door is going to open for you. So even if one of these aren't pressed and you step up, it's it's not going to open. So that's what I mean by passworded. You need the combination of all of these. Um, obviously the only downside is if you go into the Y mode you can see which buttons are connected up if you look closely so I can see that these bottom three are connected to the controllers so if you were to look you could actually figure it out um, but my uh, my solution to that is basically just to add some dummy controllers So then you can link these buttons up anyway and when you press them they don't say that they're not connected to anything which I'll just do now so basically this is with um, survival in mind and um, taking into consideration if they can use the wire tool on your creations so now you can see, I push these buttons, it still performs, doesn't say it's not connected to anything, um, so anybody coming in, you know, good luck figuring that out. Unless, um, the motion sensor here is kind of like a foolproof plan, if you've pressed all of these, the door is still not going to open, um, unless you step up to here, so if you didn't know that, you know, even if you pressed all the right combinations, the door's not going to open. So it's just another foolproof safe thing. Um, and that's that. And that's my passworded door. You know, if you hide this up, make it into a house. Um, it should actually look pretty good. Which I'll just do for you now. Password the door. It's gonna open. And you're gonna come through. Um. So what I was talking about before, we're gonna need a button here to actually lock the door once you're inside, and also a button to keep it open. So we'll link this up to the other bearings that we left. It should leave us with. that one and let's just make one more oh you're also going to need to make a block here just to block the door in case you stand in front of the center so that's and that's our new thing, we're going to need a new controller for the last bearing and link that up to this button here okay so basically to lock the door we're going to want to make it so when this button is pressed no matter what you do on the outside even if you get the password correctly and stand in front of the sensor it's not going to trigger so to do so once this first button is pressed, which links up to this bearing here, we want it to turn, say, everything in the opposite direction by, let's just say 70, because that's going to be out of range. So, show you right here, all the, the password is correct there. The sensor triggers the door. 
you go in then you lock the door and the door is not opening even if the password is correct so if someone's on the outside after you've gone in and locked the door there is no way that they are getting in okay and the reason for that is because we set that bearing to rotate by 71 degrees backwards which turns this back and does not trigger the sensor on no matter what combination so even if we're pressing these to spin it it's not triggering the sensor unless you stand in the middle that will open the door um, the next thing we want to do is this last bearing here so this one we want it to actually turn by say five six or something like that so turn the lock off we're going to come in as soon as you come in and leave that sensor the door obviously closes but now that we've triggered up this button it actually opens the door and keeps it open so if you want you know you got a few people coming in you don't want to give them the password and keep the door open that's the easy way to do it another way which I think is essential anyway um, you'd want to put it in either way is probably another sensor here so we're gonna have to add another bearing another controller I have to link that up um let's just see what this sense is doing here. That one there is by one blue. Last one is by one blue. So there you have it. I'm gonna link that up to that last sensor. So what's this what this is gonna do is actually um sort of keep the door open on the other side so if you close that closes the door come around this side enter the password correctly we go up to the sensor the door opens we step on the other side activate the other sensor and the door remains open so you can even put that probably on that second step you know here to make it once you step out it's still going to open um, or you could do you know two or three sensors to keep it open for when you step out but a good thing about that is, you know, you come in, you open your door, you want to step through and, you know, you want to still be able to open it from the other side without hitting the switch to open it and then doing this to sort of come out. So, it's just another easy access. Come out, open that, there you go. Um, what I like to do is actually hide this sensor. Um, I mean because you know because it's still theoretically part of the password um, people may just walk on and figure it out but you know Look shit because I did it quickly, but you know, it's still gonna work. And obviously, you know, you can switch these around so it's a combination that you remember, just depending where you place the buttons or where you link them up to. I can even change that just by linking it to different things. Um, you know, the controllers take up a bit of space, but you know, what's this space here? It's totally worth it for a password at door. cover 
that up. You can even place these switches onto the actual wall, which I like doing. I just wanted to place that there to show you guys. But there you have it. Password the door. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know if you have any questions or want me to do anything more. I've got a few other concepts I can show you guys. Um, but we'll just leave it here for today. Thanks. I don't know what's happening there. Hey!